Hello, my name is Zach Repencheck, and today we're going to be talking about why we should be saying goodbye to fecal cult blood testing in the emergency department. So fecal cult blood testing uh, is usually done in the ED on a guaiac based card like the one shown here. Um, Hemocult is the brand that, that we use. Um, you may have one that looks something similar. So first we should start by talking about what is the, the purpose of fecal cult blood testing? Well, the intended purpose of it is for colon cancer screening. But that's not what we tend to use it for in the emergency department. In the emergency department, we tend to use it to screen for whether someone's having a GI bleed. And this is important to understand that the reason we're using it in the emergency department is not the reason that it was intended to be used. So let's take a step back for a moment and ask the question, what is guaiac? So I said these cards are guaiac based. So guaiac is the resin from a guaiacanum tree. This is it. Beautiful, right? Anyway, someone somewhere along the line figured out that this guaiac resin, when combined with hydrogen peroxide, would eventually turn blue. Why someone figured that out? I have no idea. But somebody figured that out. But that's actually a process that takes a little bit of time. Well, somebody else figured out that if you add heme to that process, again, not sure why we're figuring this out, but regardless, somebody else figured out that if you add heme to that process, it quickens the time it takes for that chemical reaction to occur to turn the guaiac resin blue. And that's how these guaiac-based cards work. A card made of guaiac, you put stool on it, you drop hydrogen peroxide on the card, and if it turns blue, then you know that you might have the presence of heme. So here's an example of one of those cards. You probably know how this works, right? So you get the card and you, you open it up and you put some stool right here and here and you close it and then you turn around and open the other side and put some droplets of hydrogen peroxide on there and hopefully it turns blue or hopefully it doesn't depending on uh, what you're looking for. Um, and that's the way guaiac based cards are supposed to work. But there are a number of problems with guaiac based fecal occult blood testing, specifically when you look at the reasons that we're using it for. Guaiac based fecal occult blood testing is not particularly sensitive or specific in looking for clinically significant GI bleeds, which is what we are using it for. And even worse, the sensitivity and specificity for an upper GI bleed is even lower than it is for a lower GI bleed. And I feel like most of the time when we're using these guaiac based FOBT cards, we're using them to rule out for an upper GI bleed. So first, it's a bad test for the thing that we're using it for. Next, there's lots of examples of false positives and false negatives that come with guaiac based FOBT. For example, imagine eating a nice perfectly cooked medium rare steak. So you might notice that there's you know, this kind of reddish tinge to your steak. Well, what do you think that is? That's heme. So if you have animal heme ingested prior to doing an FOBT card, well then that card could be positive because you have non-human heme in your stool. So Generally, when people use FOBT as colon cancer screening, the patient's asked to be NPO for a significant period of time prior to giving their stool sample. In the emergency department, we don't have that luxury. So we don't know what the patient may have eaten or ingested prior to it. And there's many other things that can give us false positives. Many fruits and vegetables, such as broccoli can, um, some medications, NSAIDs, antiplatelet agents can sometimes give you false positives as well. And of course, there's false negatives too. Vitamin C is known to do an oxidization reaction that sometimes can lead to false negatives on cards as well. So fruits such as citrus that are high in vitamin C or someone who's on vitamin C supplementation may end up giving you a false negative study. So with all of these many flaws of the test, why do we do it? Why are we using fecal occult blood testing in the emergency department if it's not the right test for what we want to find out. Well, one of the biggest answers I get for this is, oh, I think that the inpatient team will want it. I think my consultant may want it. Well, I would like to take this opportunity to make an announcement. Your gastroenterologist does not want a fecal occult blood test. There's several articles in the GI literature that says, we don't really understand why emergency physicians keep using this test. That's not what the test is for. So if the reason you're doing it is because you think your consultant may want it, take a step back and think, you know what? 
my consultant probably doesn't want this. I'm probably doing it more for myself than I am doing for the consultant. And let's not use that as an excuse. Okay, so let's do a quick summary of where we are. FOBT, not particularly sensitive or specific. It's a bad test. Lots of false positives and false negatives. When we do the test, the results may not be the right one. And we're not using it for the purpose for which it's intended. Now, all that being said, stopping using FOBT does not mean we have to stop doing rectal exams. Examining the area, getting a stool sample, looking at the quality of the stool, these things are still important in making the diagnosis of GI bleed and figuring out its possible etiology. But after you do the rectal exam, you can stop there and don't even bother putting that stool on a card. So the number one pushback I get on this is, what about iron or what about bismuth containing medications? Those things that are gonna turn your stool black. You know, how do you differentiate between someone who's on iron and someone who's having melanoma of an upper GI bleed? Well, admittedly, these are difficult situations. If there's someone who's having black stool, who's also taking iron, and you're worried they're having an upper GI bleed, I agree, this is a tough spot. But the fecal occult blood testing is not the answer. Again, this is a test that's not highly sensitive or specific, especially in the setting of upper GI bleeds and melanoma. So let's say you do have a patient who has black stool and is on iron and you do a fecal occult blood testing and it comes back positive. Great, this is an upper GI bleed, easy. Let's admit them to the hospital. Well, what if this is one of those many false positives that we talked about? Now you're admitting this patient to the hospital, GI consult, endoscopy, all because they're taking iron. Let's look at it the other way. What about the patient who's on iron with black stools that you're worried maybe it's melanoma? and you do fecal occult blood testing, and it's one of those false negatives. Well, now you're sending that patient home who may be having an upper GI bleed. So my point is that, yes, it's a tough situation, but a bad test isn't the answer to a difficult situation. So in conclusion, it's time to say goodbye, peace, adios, see you later to fecal occult blood testing. It's not using it for its intended purpose in the emergency department. It's not a good test, and let's get rid of it. Thank you all so much for your time. Hit me up if you have any thoughts or questions.